All right. Welcome, everybody, to the stream here. We are just 10 seconds away from starting this match here. Get this queued up. Get these guys ready to go. So welcome, everybody. This is White Fox versus Redcoats. There we go. Go, go, go. So there you can see we'll be following White Fox here on the militia side. We are on Co-Hot Skirmish. And, uh... Yeah, we are excited to be here. It is semifinals, and uh, we have a new commentator. I'd like to welcome to the stream. So we've got Karma Cut in here with us right now. Karma Cut, welcome. Thank you. Uh, for everyone that doesn't know, I was a former IB squad leader. So I uh, we played on this map, actually. So I should have some uh, interesting things to say here about this game. So I'm excited to see how it plays out, and uh, hope we, hopefully we'll have some really fun games ahead of us. Absolutely. Good to have you here. So we've got these, uh, just Karma Cut and I announcing this match right now. We're following White Fox, and Karma Cut is there over on the uh, Red Coats team. And uh, this is the semifinals, so we've got two matches going down today. And the winners um, of those two matches are going to go on to the um, finals. So this is going to be a very exciting uh, day for Squad League. We'll have, those, um, we'll have that grand final and then that third place final. Um, which are only going to be the uh, the other matches that are left in our tournament. So these matches today are going to be very deciding for these teams, these four teams that are going to be playing. But following White Fox here, these guys are following that um, tactic where they will place down uh, rally points and have guys spawn in with fresh legs. There you can see. And uh, no fobs up yet, but you can see White Fox utilizing those map markers. We've seen Kohat skirmish a little bit. Uh, in this tournament, and uh, this is a very fun map to cover. Uh, a lot of action down here in the valley, and as well on the hills on either side of the valley. Yeah, right off the bat here, I can see uh, Redcoats are going for a really aggressive two-man squad push for mid, and we'll see if they decide to take an aggressive move across the river to contest uh, White Fox's second flag. See now that uh, both squads from either team are now crossing the river, so there's going to be presence from either team on the uh, opposite sides of the river here. So we're going to see some interesting uh, flip-flopping across the river, I I'd imagine, here soon. Yeah, it looks like Redcoats start to pin down a few White Fox guys that are over here in the middle. The uh, Redcoats setting up a pretty formidable line there. They have the majority of their team set up in the middle of their uh, map, forming that skirmish line to stop anything from White Fox coming down the middle. Now, the issue I see here now is that uh, White Fox is taking advantage of this, or maybe they have already pre-planned pre for this, and they're right. using those uh, hills to kind of get around this line. So we'll see if White Fox can make some nice flanks and uh, exploit the fact that most of Redcoats' players are in the middle of the map. Yeah, I can see a couple of those White Fox guys moving over to the east, but they're going to run into almost a full squad there of Redcoats. I believe that's Jap's Eye who's probably leading that squad. I think Jap's Eye is one of those guys that likes to lead the squads that operate on the fringes of the map. Really uh, excels in those guerrilla tactics, so we're seeing him right now push through those White Fox guys out there. That is true. Mountains. That is true. Um, White Fox now, though, has that intel that there is a full squad over there for uh, Redcoats, so we'll see if they uh, decide to adjust their strategy to this um, now that they realize that they can't get a small uh, squad over on their flank on that eastern side. Yeah, so while Redcoats send that full squad out to the east, over to the west here, White Fox, uh, full squad here in the hills, although it looks like Dipsis is going to be the one to trigger the uh, Redcoat's alarm there and alert his team to their location. See him closing in now on this full squad of White Fox guys. Right, exactly. Now you can see the true problem right here with playing the hills too heavily is you give the other team the advantage of barreling down the middle. Um, you see Redcoats are in a very good position here on their third cap already. And they are they have that cap on lockdown and they're preventing White Fox from moving down off the hill uh, to defend their second flag. So... Maybe that was uh, White Fox's strategy to just uh, let Red uh, Coats take that flag uncontested, but we'll see if this uh, will end up biting White Fox in the uh, in the butt later. Yeah, you're right. A lot of Red Coats guys down there in the middle. White Fox pretty pinned down. Seen a lot more fire coming from the Reds uh, in terms of suppression than from White Fox shooting back there. But smoke going up now here for White Fox. Pulling up the map here, we can see our objectives there. 
White Fox pushing on their attack flag. Redcoat's trying to pull that double cap there right now. So they're trying to cap those two flags simultaneously. They've got, uh, they've got that Deffy squad there I can see in the distance. Rossi Raider down there capping that objective, their attack flag. And they've also got this, um, this squad fighting tooth and nail with uh, White Fox now, looking to get that double cap. And there we see uh, fields capped by Redcoat. So now these guys inside cap here in front of me are now capping this objective. And they are very quickly... Um, taking these objectives as they have planned out this attack. Exactly. Now you can see the main issue with letting the uh, other team get onto your second cap really fast is it prevents you from crossing the river safely. You can see that Russ's squad has great river control on that bend right there next to the gully. And they're just cutting down WF uh, players as they cross that river. And you see WF is trying to counter that play by smoking the river so they can cross safely. right now that both uh, White Fox and Red Boots are fighting over this gully that plays a major role in that second flag. It offers great protection from the cap zone as well as river control which is pretty crucial on this map considering how the river runs straight down the uh, center of the play area and it kind of splits the map in a way that you can control who goes where. Absolutely. Yeah, Red Coats really do seem to be dominating right now. We'll see how White Fox can respond to this. They fighting right now for that last cap it looks like uh, I see a lot more red in the cap than I do see uh, blue so definitely red coats dominating this cap area White Fox on the perimeter of it you can see the sphere right there uh, above that that shows oh and there we see their militia capturing uh, north fields there Yeah, White Fox is trying to exploit the fact that they have the optics advantage by trying to hold those uh, western hills and have shooters looking down over the valley. But they, I feel like they allocated too many resources to that western hill and Redcoat saw this uh, saw this weakness, exploited it, and was able to push through um, really uncontested. And now White Fox is scrambling to set up a defense before Redcoats can use this momentum to crush the game. Okay, we are capping now, we are capping. I like this play by Jab Size Squad holding that uh, Eastern Hill. That Eastern Hill is pretty crucial as the um, top team right here, as the White Fox, because if they can get around that Eastern Hill, they can come behind the uh, second flag and flank Russ's squad on the cap. Yeah, I am seeing but, that as well. Um, I am hearing, though, from White Fox comms that they are capping uh, this objective right now, so they are... Uh, you can see right there, red coat, a lot of red coats down there, um, and they are not in control of that cap right now. It looks like it's going to be neutral soon if White Fox can keep guys in there. So we'll see. I, I do see what you're talking about, those guys, though, in the corner. That would be very, very helpful if uh, the red coats could have held their guys on cap moving to that next flag. They'd be able to kind of cut off the back end of White Fox, but it looks like... Yeah, now we've got a lot of White Fox guys down here in the cap. We'll see how the Red Coats move and how many bodies they move down here. Let's see yes, them now. So you can see how crucial uh, that gully is on the northern side of the cap. Uh, White Fox is using that for cover and control right now. They can cap from inside that area. And it offers a lot of protection rather than s the concealment that the fields offer. I'm getting comms here that uh, Red Coats are recapping. They're getting control back over this uh, third cap. You can see them using smoke to layer that concealment and try to keep their guys alive that are in the field. We're down to 121 tickets here for White Fox. How does your ticket count for the Reds? 137 for the Reds. Red's dominating here early on in this match over White Fox, not out of it, fighting uh, pretty good right now. White Fox actually in a very good position here. They're able to sneak past the Eastern squad that Red Coast put up. And now this flank um, from White Fox's uh, squad is right on top of the Red Coats on the flag. And you can see how effective it is to come around that Eastern side when uh, Red Coats are trying to defend and capture and secure that cap. 
This eastern flank is doing a lot of damage to Redcoats, and White Fox might be able to turn the game right here if they uh, can finish cleaning out these fields right here. This is what it looks like they're doing. And now Redcoats is in a very, very bad position. Redcoats has a squad off to the east that are not defending the cap, but they have to deal with the contacts that are on the uh, defensive cap. It looks like, however, that their defensive squad, Russ's uh, squad, was able to hold this without too much problem. So maybe if White Fox can pull this maneuver off again and clear the uh, cap effectively, um, they might be in a very good job to take the cap and then kind of pinch on that uh, Redcoat squad off to the east. But yeah, that's certainly a talking point. You know, when you've got enemies inside a cap like this that are defending it, you know, you're not going to be able to just brute force your way in there without sustaining a ton of casualties. And White Fox showed us in that last move there that, you know, in order to get what you want and get those reds out of there, they're willing to hit them on their flank or, you know, come up with some sort of move and adapt their um, their plan of attack, you know, dynamically and saying, well, we're seeing a lot of reds by that wall. Maybe we can get close to them by using the buildings for cover and, you know, throw grenades down in there. You know, they're all talking to each other in their squads, figuring out in real time how they can, um, you know, gain the advantage back. And that's good to see um, because sometimes we will see clans just really just start pouring into the objective head on and, and taking a ton of casualties. But that was a good move from White Fox. Uh, you can still see there tons of reds down um, from that play. And, and we're seeing right now, even after getting those guys down, White Fox was able to get a squad up front. And uh, they're now pushing into that cap and uh, yep, clearing White out Fox the remaining is, uh... yeah, red coats in here. Yeah, White Fox is making a good move right here, trying to take the momentum back. Um, Red Coast Eastern Squad maybe pushed out a little too far east, and they weren't able to cap, uh, not cap, but uh, find these uh, White Fox guys that that what these White Fox guys that are sneaking in in between both uh, Red uh, Coast defensive teams. You can see right now that if you can get in without being noticed, how much damage uh, you can do on a flank. What I am seeing right here is a allocation of a lot of uh, White Fox re resources on this western hill where the Redcoats are only sending a couple guys. Now this is really effective because Redcoats are going to be able to tie up this uh, White Fox squad on a, on a 2 to 1 um, disadvantage, but they'll be tying up that amount of resources from White Fox, so that's a very smart move by uh, Redcoats. Again, pulling up the map there. White Fox in control of one flag. Redcoats in control of three. The battle right now is White Fox trying to attack that flag there. You can see in the middle by squad three. Redcoats, of course, defending that flag as well as looking at that last flag, hoping to cap that. Are there any uh, FOBs down for White Fox? I'm looking right now, and uh, nope, I'm not seeing any FOB. Oh, no, there is one FOB. It's in Foxtrot 6, keypad 1. Oh, I see. Yeah, that's a very popular uh, spot to put an FOB down. Yep. You see a lot of teams uh, on this map, especially since the map is so small and so wide, um, you can't really put FOBs behind the hills because once you do that, you are reinforcing uh, units will get caught in the open coming down the hill back into the play zone. So you, you usually see the caps, or not the caps, but the FOBs as an extension of the main, a safer, closer area for a uh, squad to spawn in on. Not necessarily a flanking fob or an attacking fob, but just an extension of the main. Right. Still skirmishing down here in the fields. White, I can see White Fox and Redcoats guys skirmishing in the hills there to the west. And that's always a tricky... The hills in this map are very tricky because you want to commit some sort of force to clearing them and protecting them, but not too many... Um, because you really need all that oomph down up front, capturing these objectives and moving through the valley. So if you don't have anybody in the hills, you're going to lose control of them, and that can really come around to bite you in the ass. But if you commit too many people, uh, you're going you're gonna to be in a bad place because you're not going to have that force you need to cap these objectives um, yeah, down on the front exactly. line. Yeah, we saw an over... Uh, a, a bad... not necessarily bad, but maybe... Um, White Fox overcommitted too many people to the uh, hills, and you can see how Redcoats kind of exploited that and using what you said, that oomph, that extra power in the middle to push down that third cap and to get control over the game and to kind of set the play field how they want to set it. Um, the awkward thing about this uh, map is that most teams will try to control both hills, and what that does is that splits your resources 
and good teams will see this and exploit this and they'll kind of just push it straight down the middle and force the fight onto one hill mainly so it's very important to realize you know as a squad leader as a team leader you know realizing what parts of the map are relevant and what are not you don't want to be committing too many forces to uh parts of the map that necessarily are no longer in the uh, area of play The uh, red coats right here are pushing up slowly through the gully. They have great control over that gully right now, and you can see it's really hurting White Fox's attempt to attack from the northeast. Once again, though, one of the major attack uh, areas of attack for that uh, second flag for White Fox would be from the northeast, and you do see them coming down that road and attempting to get an eastern flank on that cap. Yep, we can see there on the maps. That's squads three and five. Squad leaders out there trying to... Get their squads around there. Tape Tech, hey, thanks for the donation, man. Appreciate it. Very nice there. So, yeah, that's squads three and five trying to push there for White Fox. Again, trying to utilize these buildings um, in order to get close to these Red Coats guys down in the field. And then looking at the cap, a lot of bodies White down Fox here. White Fox is in a really good position. Absolutely. Yeah. White Fox in a very good position. I feel like uh, Red Coats overextended their defense a little here, and now they've been caught off guard, and White Fox is just coming in from behind and cleaning it up. Uh, I feel like Red, Fo uh, Red, Red Coats might have pushed up a little too far, and White Fox was able to exploit this. There are very few Red Coats players on the uh, second cap here now. There's only, I think, three alive within the cap zone. Maybe Absolutely. two. Absolutely, and I'm also noting this push from White Fox out in the hills here to the west. This is definitely needed. They definitely need some sort of distraction for the red coats in order to ease up that advance they have going on down there. We'll yeah, you see. can completely see why uh, it's so important to have some sort of eyes up on the hills. Maybe not a whole squad. Unfortunately for red uh, red coats, White Fox was able to squeeze uh, to squeeze this four man element in behind them, and this four man element can end up doing a lot of damage to red coats um, since they're over on this side of the map, uncontested or undetected. Right, and do Redcoats have a fob up down here? Yeah, Redcoats uh, have a fob that is really close to their main. It's a really safe fob placement. I would say they might have been able to even place it a little for, uh, closer to the play area. Um, their fob is in E8, uh, keypad 9. So basically just two keypads over from their main. So it's really interesting to see how safely they played that fob. And you can see right now White Fox moving in to intercept the uh, incoming Redcoats uh, reinforcements here and they're going to be able to do a lot of damage because red coats have no idea that they're here we're down to 64 tickets here for white fox how is it looking on the red coat side red coats are strong at 98 tickets all right so certainly a lead there for the red coats however white fox not down and out here their team now uh you can see that split there four-man team and uh, three of them go down there to look for fobs, and they leave mostly up there with his RPG um, to start drawing fire. Like these guys are about to get in contact, though. Kind of see the advantage that uh, Redcoats gained by pushing their offense or their defense so far north of the cap is they were able to die, but the fact that they had that skirmish line ahead of the cap and not on the cap gave them the time to regroup and get back to the cap in time before... Uh, White Fox decided to make a push onto the flag. So that's why it's very important to set your defense not only on the flag, but kind of layer it ahead and around so that those um, re uh, those defenders that die do have the time and that luxury to spawn at a different spawn point and walk back in rather than waiting for a medic or something like that. Right. See their difficult move there for Red Coast. Uh, team kill there with a grenade. And that was, uh, that was just a matter of communication, it looks like. We had uh, Anti-Citizen 1 prone there. Didn't see this White Fox guy who was basically right on top of him. And uh, that grenade was just too close uh, for comfort there. And it, it, get, it results in a TK uh, there. He's wounded. You can see this White Fox uh, squad that got around behind Redcoats. is doing so much damage. They're distracting Redcoats back here. They're um, making Redcoats lose tickets. They're just doing a great job back here with uh, disruption. And you can see how important it is to have those eyes on the flanks. And to keep checking your sides because right now Redcoats is kind of split between um, defending their fob and defending their reinforcements and defending the cap. You can see them pulling guys off of the uh, defense cap to move back here to deal with this White Fox uh, squad. Absolutely. And these White Fox guys, it looks like they placed a rally down here and they are starting to spawn in in greater numbers here. 
So Redcoats definitely need to commit resources to deal with these guys. I don't think sober and grumpy is going to be enough. Looks like CKY and Fusion here are also already there as well. Very interesting move there for White Fox, trying to pull some pressure off of those uh, flags and you that they're fighting for. Yeah, you see that strategy is really working. White Fox now has an opportunity to take this third cap. That flanking element really tied up uh, Redcoats enough that their attacking element, White Fox's attacking element, was able to make a strong push on this cap. And they, now they have an actual opportunity to cap this flag and take this flag back from the Redcoats. How are the uh, how are the comms on the Redcoat side? I know the Redcoats use comms quite a bit. It's pretty quiet here on the the White Fox side. Uh, Redcoats uh, comms are excellent. I'm hearing a lot of chatter, a lot of callouts, <clears throat> a lot of teamwork, a lot of coordination that goes into uh, playing these kind of games. And especially when the map is so small and so volatile, you really need to have that instant communication, that instant clarity with your squad members and your squad leaders in order to organize a proper attack or defense. On Kohat Skirmish especially, since the map is so small, it's very important to react as fast as you can to what the enemy is doing and to get that plan um, made and to push that plan out into a delivery. You can see right now, since that map is so small, White Fox might have an opportunity not only to take this flag, but to even cross over the river and go that next flag. I'm not sure if that uh, flanking squad is still effective, but they've slowed down Redcoats a considerable amount. How many tickets left for uh, White Fox? We're now down to 34 here. Yeah, Redcoats had that ticket bleed on them for the majority of the game, so I can see how there's a f there, there's a 50 uh, ticket deficit right here. Um, Redcoats are seeing a, a solid 81 tickets. Ah, okay. Yeah, we definitely saw Redcoats there dominating early game, but White Fox causing a lot of issues here for the Reds late game. You can see that White Fox uh, squad is now pushing in from the south, so they might be able to catch a lot of Redcoats here with their backs turned. Now, is that FOB still up for uh, for the Redcoats? That FOB is still up. I don't believe White Fox found that FOB. That FOB is in a really safe position. So I would assume that uh, White Fox would not bother committing too many resources to try to eliminate that FOB. That you hear the call out from the Redcoats right now, calling out that White Fox squad that's behind the Redcoats, and they're struggling right now to deal with this uh, squad that got around behind them. Interesting now here, coming to the end game, 26 tickets left for White Fox. They could push into this uh, objective and neutralize it, but I'm looking right now at this uh, this northwestern push from the hills there. Oh, and there we see the, the cap go neutral. And that's going to stall this uh, this squad of Redcoats that has been devoted to capping that last objective. They're all exactly. the way out here to the northwest. And they were looking to cap that objective. But um, because of that stalled uh, uh, Redcoats push, White Fox was able to get into that cap and neutralize it. Yeah, White Fox is not feeling the pressure right now from uh, Redcoats, and you can see how that allows a team to move as they want to move and manipulate the map. I think Redcoats are overextending again, and they could maybe even lose this uh, second cap if that Northwestern attacking team does not pull back in time. Looks like a fresh spawn in there for Redcoats. Got that squad now to my south, moving up the valley. White Fox making a really aggressive play right now, crossing the river into the uh, their third cap. It's a really strong push from uh, White Fox right now. And I, I think they kind of feel that there's little pressure being um, applied to them because that Northwestern uh, Redcoats squad is up there. And they're trying to take advantage of this uh, relief and pressure and go for an aggressive, really aggressive play here.
So we can see there, flag split. We're now down to 26 tickets. They, right. White Fox is doing a good job of closing that gap. Red uh, Redcoats are now at a 47 uh, ticket hold. There's only about a 20 ticket difference here coming into the end game. That's certainly different from what we started off with. Mm, very different. It's interesting to see right now if Redcoats can exploit the fact that White Fox overextended and tried to attack this flag. And if they can cap that uh, flag back and end the game right here. Yep, I'm seeing a lot of down arrows here from White Fox. Crossing that uh, that open valley, um, that open riverbed rather, is uh, it's a very very tough call to make. You gotta you gotta mm -hmm. cross that you know with the confidence that they don't have eyes on you further down because it's it's very open. It's kind of no man's land in between these fields, and uh, we see that evident as the uh, the white fox bodies stack up there in the middle. You can see how river control really slowed White Fox down right there. Redcoats had a couple guys on that south side of the river. They were able to pick off and slow down that White Fox across, uh, across the uh, river. I can see now uh, Redcoats are neutralizing that flag again. And if they can neutralize this and cap this, I'm pretty sure that will close out the game. Yep, now down to 16 tickets. So that that squad attacking that last defense flag uh, earlier on in the game ended up coming down south and uh, coming back inside of this cap. So that was a very good use of resources there from the Redcoats, um, being able to say, well, you know, we didn't get that last flag, but uh, why don't you guys come back down to the fight and uh, help us out getting this cap. White Fox now scrambling to get a defense up on this, uh, on their defend flag. But once again, uh, Redcoats are utilizing that gully that offers so much vision and protection rather than the fields to kind of slow down this push, and we'll see if they're able to hold against this larger squad. They're in a lot of trouble now. You can see White Fox pulling guys back from the offense uh, across the river to try to handle these uh, Redcoats attackers. Now down to 12 tickets here. How are the Reds looking? the game kind of slowing down now as both teams uh set up a proper defense um as the tickets get lower and lower teams start playing safer and safer and you can see that right now neither squad or neither team wants to give up unnecessary tickets as as this game gets closer and closer to ending how are the redcoats tickets looking uh 41 tickets but remember that you don't they don't necessarily know the uh white foxes tickets and so they're playing as if they're down i believe right Yeah, you can definitely see this game slow down considerably. White fo um, Redcoats have actually put down a second fob on the northwestern side of the map, uh, close to uh, White Fox's last flag. You can see a couple reinforcements there streaming down that hill. Couple white fox uh, attackers attacking from the uh, inside the cap almost. I'm not sure how they got there. I wasn't paying. But you can see how getting in behind a force can really disrupt and distract a team. Yeah, it's certainly disconcerting when you start taking fire from the rear. And uh, you don't quite know how many guys there are back there. You don't know if they're only having one guy open up or if the whole squad's back there opening up at you. And you don't really know how many resources to devote. Um, to flushing those guys back out. So getting behind the exactly. enemy is, is always good. Exactly, because it forces the uh, the target to react as if they're being overwhelmed, which might not necessarily be true. And you can kind of trick the enemy team into over-allocating resources into places where they shouldn't be. Now down 11 tickets here for White Fox, coming into the last part of this match here. 34 tickets for Redcoats. The call goes out from uh, Redcoats that they are capping this flag again. So we'll see if they're actually able to close out the game here with this cap. Yep, now down to nine here. A couple of these White Fox guys holding spawn. 
They are not quite sure how far down the red coats are, so they are, uh, you know, at this point being low on tickets, they're looking into the next match um, already, saying, you know, if we can conserve as many tickets as possible, that's going to help us out in that next match there. Exactly. Once again, this gully coming into play. It's such a crucial part of this map, this northern gully on the uh, attack flag. You can see the Redcoats kind of using this uh, western wall as cover from the eastern uh, attacking uh, White Fox squad. And it's pretty effective as long as you stay low. Remember that uh, White Fox does have that optics advantage, so they, so they are able to pick off um, a couple players at distance. So it's very important to stay low and spread out when you're trying to cap a uh, flag on this map. White Fox still trying to push down that eastern side. Red Coast is just hanging out on the uh, west, the river bank on the west here. Yeah. Pushing more guys onto that wall, trying to get as many bodies as they can to cap this flag and close out the game. Four tickets now. Thirty tickets for uh, Red Coats. three tickets now make sure you grab that um that last ticket count for red coats because we will definitely need that going into the second oh, match of course yeah cohat does lead to some very interesting and close games i believe so there you have it first match out of the way there red coats take white fox now what's your ticket count 30 30 oh, yeah, tickets. 30 tickets there so white fox down by 30 we'll see if they can come back here in round two we've got this other round here again if there's uh if there is a tie, uh, the game will go to tickets there. So if, uh, if White Fox can come back, we will have that match go to tickets. So they have lost by 30. We'll see if they can have.